Hi guys! In case you didn't watch the first video I did, I just want to introduce myself again. My name is Liz and I am new here to providing content on the R Safe Harbor platform. Um, I want to take an opportunity before I get started to thank the R Safe Harbor team for letting me do this. Um, it's a huge honor and I'm really excited about it. And so hopefully you guys can enjoy some of the content that I put out. Uh, to kind of recap what I did in the first video, um, I started by talking about a passage in Deuteronomy often referred to as the Shema. And the Shema being a Hebrew word for meaning, you know, to listen, to pay attention to, and to focus on. And with that, I'm going to be using it as an umbrella and a foundation piece to bring up these topics that um, didn't often come up for me at home or weren't really expressed enough about when it came to God fitting into more than just what we do a couple times a week and what we usually call worship. Um, and, and even with that, uh, I want to take an opportunity again to express that I'm not trying to sh throw shade at my parents. I love my parents. They are the best parents I could have asked for, and I think they did a wonderful job raising me and my siblings. And they've honestly been two of the biggest pillars in my faith life and, and helping me grow closer to God. But with that, they're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We're humans and we make mistakes and we don't always uh, teach what we should. We don't always do what we should. And, and so that's what I want to do here is kind of talk to you guys about what I've learned growing up and kind of what I missed out on so that, you know, we can talk about it and grow in it together. And so for this video, I wanted to talk about the idea of jobs, working, money, spending money, and saving money. Um, so when it came to me being in high school, um, you know, realizing that, oh my gosh, I'm going to be an adult soon, you know, what do I want to do with my life? As I tried to connect that with my Christian life, my spiritual life, I really started to worry and wonder, you know, what is it that God wants me to do? What's the path that he wants me to take? What's the best choice that God can make the most of? Um, and it took me a while to really realize that there's not one best choice. Um, it, even though uh, you can look in scripture and sometimes gather the idea that God has our life mapped out for us, he knows what we're gonna do, when we're gonna do it, and he has a plan set out for us, I don't think that it refers to the fact that God expects us to know that plan and to make every specific calculated step. Um, that being said, um, I think that regardless of what we do, as long as we love what we do and we pursue what we're passionate about, we pursue what we feel like we're good at and we can excel at, God can use that. Uh, he can use us, he can work through us to be glorified, but it's really just a matter of if we're going to let him. Uh, and so one of the scriptures I like to reference for that is Proverbs 16.3. And so that says, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Again, not saying that he has everything set out for us, and if we make the wrong move, he can't do anything with us. We're just kind of done for more so emphasizing the fact that we just need to let him. We need to give everything we can for his glory and let him work through us, let him reflect through us to others. Um, another question that I pondered on a lot, even now as a working professional, is does my job matter? You know, when I was working as a cashier or as a waitress, and again, now, um, I wonder, and I'm sure many people have wondered, does my job matter? And the answer to that, I would say, is a lot more plain and simple. Uh, yes. Excuse me while I turn my computer back on. <laughs> yes, our jobs do matter. Um, regardless of what it is, we could be, if you want to say, on the low end of the totem pole, 
or on the high end. Again, God can use us wherever we are. But I think the important thing when it comes to our jobs specifically and the work that we do are the ideas of attitude and perception. And so now I want to I want to take a second to really break down what I mean by that. And so when it comes to the idea of attitude, um, you'll often hear people say, you know, I don't care what others think about me. And simply speaking, you know, that's not a bad frame of mind to have. Um, it's good not to be bogged down and not to be worried about what others might be thinking about us. But how others perceive us is still important. You know, when you go to work, when you do what you do every day, are you showing them a reflection of what love is, what kindness is, what compassion is? Are you showing them a reflection of Jesus and his servant heart that he exemplified for us? Do they see the character of Jesus in you? And so in that aspect, the idea of the perception of others does matter and it should matter to us. Um, and then that is where attitude comes in. So when you go to work, whether it's a job you don't wanna be working but you have to be working at, or maybe you're in a job and you're just not where you wanna be yet, are you just showing up or are you doing more than that? Are you kind of going through the motions, um, doing what you need to do, going in eight to five and just trying to get out as quick as you can? Are you working for the weekends? Are you working just to build up those vacation days until you can get a day off and get out of there? Or are you working with intentionality? Are you taking time to build relationships with your coworkers to spread the good news of Jesus Christ? Because realistically, it's not just up to the preacher or to the missionary or to the youth minister to do that. It's all of us, male and female. We are called by God to to preach the good news of Jesus. And honestly, we should want to, you know, when when you come across God's grace and his love, we should want to share that with everybody. And, you know, it doesn't have to be you go into work one day and you say, hey, can I tell you about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Uh, <laughs> even though if that's the approach you want to take, you can. But a more practical way could be exemplifying those characters of Jesus. Having purpose behind what you do. Having intention behind what you do. Showing love, kindness, compassion, service. Again, all of that letting... The character of Jesus reflect through us so that others can see that. Um, and so with that, you know, I would say whatever you're doing in your professional life, in your job life, strive to do the best that you can. But on the flip side, don't overwork yourself. Um, don't work so hard, take on so many tasks that you neglect yourself, that you neglect your family, uh, and that you neglect rest because Rest is just as important as work. It's okay to take a break and it's okay to say no to some things and some people. Um, giving 100%, uh, especially when it comes to exemplifying Jesus and what we do for the Lord, comes from taking time to be filled 100%. Again, in order to give 100%, you have to be filled to 100%. So work with intentionality, work with purpose, but don't constantly empty yourself out without taking time to be filled and take care of yourself. Um, and when it comes to the idea of work itself, I know it can kind of seem like something that we have to do to survive or something that's just kind of here. Uh, most of us don't like working. But when you look at it, the idea of work itself, God created it for good, for our benefit. It was an idea in the world before sin was, before Adam and Eve sinned. Uh, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, it says that the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work and to take care of it. 
And so that's something that God gave us, something that we get to do to, to do good and to even more so experience God's goodness, experience the benefits that God wants us to have in this world. Um, another scripture example that I thought of for this is Ephesians 2.10, where it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So again, just emphasizing the idea that work was never meant to be something to just bog us down and, and trudge through every single day of our lives until we die. It was something created for us to benefit from and for us to hopefully enjoy. Something that God created for good. Um, now I want to switch to the idea of money because usually when you think about work, you do it to earn money. So what about money? Um, should we be striving for riches, all the wealth that this world has to offer? Or should we be giving away everything that we can uh, until we're down to the bare bones of our lives and, and living a very minimalistic and modest life? Um, and the answer to that is, is not so simple uh, because that's really going to depend on what your intention behind gaining wealth or giving is, what your passion and your purpose is for working and for gaining wealth and giving. Uh, do you want to gain wealth to flaunt it so that others can say, wow, look at all these great things you have. Wow, look at how much money you have. Do you want to give all that you can so that others can see it and say, wow, I wish I was like that person. Uh, or do you want to give as a way to try to gain God's favor? You know, we, we see examples of both of those in scripture and neither of them are are good. Neither of them are good things to strive for. Um, and even with that, there are some that can tend to teach the idea of a prosperity gospel, where if you do this, this, and this, God's going to bless you. He's going to give you everything this world has to offer. And most of the time, that refers to monetary gain, uh, physical gain. And they'll use scriptures such as Philippians 4.19 to back that up where it says, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And then on the flip side of that, some people tend to teach that any monetary or material gain is just completely against what God wants for us. He hates the fact that we're trying to save money. He hates the fact that we would even want to buy anything or do anything to enjoy this life. And they'll get that idea sometimes from Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, where it says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And that's kind of an extreme, uh, you know, just because we're working to, to save money or, you know, to buy something that we might like, it doesn't mean that we're serving money. It doesn't mean that we're idolizing money. Uh, though it can be very easy to do so, it's still more of an extreme case. Uh, and so with that being said, neither of those are true and neither of those are, are what God wants for us. Uh, God wants all of us to prosper and to have a good and full life. I mean, he created this earth for us. He created us to enjoy him, him to enjoy us and us to enjoy this earth. He wants us to have a good life full of blessings, but those blessings and that fullness of life is gonna look different for everybody. It's gonna look different for every individual and for every family. So with that, I would say, try to make sure we're not comparing ourselves or our blessings to those of others. Cause we're each, you know, on our own journey with God, and he's going to give us what we need, but it's gonna look different for everybody. Um, another point I would say is to give to others as you can. Uh, giving is always great. Uh, I think it's great for the soul. I love to do it, whether it's monetarily, whether it's my time, whether it's my knowledge, my skills. 
I love to give. Um, but make sure that when you give, you also give to yourself. You give to your family. Um, you give what you need, not just what others need. Um, spend money as you need to, or even sometimes as you want to, even on pleasures of the world. Again, God didn't create us to live in this world just to hate it. Originally, the intent was for us to enjoy everything this world has to offer. And so strive for that. Enjoy pleasures and don't feel guilty about it. He wants us to have a good life and to enjoy it. Um, and when it comes to savings accounts and investments, you know, save what you feel will benefit you and your family in the long run. Um, it's, it's never bad to save or to invest money um, and to plan for the future, even though some people w may refer to when Jesus says, you know, storing up treasures is bad because moths can destroy and thieves can steal it, which can happen. But I think that's a different scenario there if we look at the context. And again, I don't think that God absolutely hates the idea of wanting us to save and plan for our future or our family's future when one day we may not be able to work anymore. Um, and so a uh, scripture reference I have for that would be 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 18, where it says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment, Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. Again, just kind of summing that all up there. Um, and to not make this video longer than it needs to be, I just want to end with an overarching theme here that when it comes down to jobs and money and savings and spending, really make sure that you're looking at the heart of of why you're doing it. What's your intention behind what you wanna pursue, what you wanna spend money on, uh, why are you saving, why are you giving? Um, look at your intentions, and at the end of the day, give thanks for everything. Uh, really, that's it. Look at your intentions, and at the end of the day, give thanks for everything, no matter where you're at. And I will leave you with these two verses. Colossians 3, 23 through 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. And then 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you were able to get something out of it and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Have a great day.